Welcome back. So now that we have a context, let's start talking about the next step, which will be our repositories. Because in the old setup, our infrastructure, static data, he had a list of repositories. We need that still. We still need a list of repositories. Even though we switched to um, the context instead of the fake DB, we still need the repositories that can kind of explain to you. The pattern says, I know how to work with a customer's table. I know how to work with an orders table. It can also, in the repository, we can also start now talking between different tables and say, I want to get information from the customer, but I also want information from the order tables using this context. So what we're going to do is we're going to this lesson create um, the folder for the repositories, first of all. So I'll make a new directory right here and I'll call it repositories. Repo not a capitalized E there, lowercase e, there we go. So that's kind of the same, exact same structure, right? And then I'm going to add these two guys up there. So I'll just first add a class right here called customer repository. And then I'll do the same for the order, right? Customer repository. And I'll do the same for the order. So I'll add the two repositories. Order repository. There we go. So now these guys have been added as well. And now I need to, of course, do the one and most important thing. And that is to start using the interface from the domain service in my core, right? Because I expect as a core that anybody who calls a repository who wants to work together in my application, they need to uphold the contract that I provide right here. So any repository, I don't care how you get the data, I don't care what you save it as, but you need to be able to create right now, read, read all, update and delete, and we'll change this. It'll be a lot more complex than this later on, so you just have to wait and just look forward to that. But right now, let's try and say that a customer repository needs to implement the I customer repository. Now, if you can't find that one, it's probably because you forgot to actually add the dependency to the app core up here. So you can go and do that now if you forgot that. But when I have this, I need to kind of do the implementing of the missing members, Azumi. There we go. And I need to do the same now for the order repository. And again, notice it's a lot easier if you guys start out by doing this instead of having to kind of map everything later on. You see, this is a lot more work than if I had a completely clean solution with no uh, already existing repository. So with test room development, this is going to be so much more powerful. But we'll get back to that later. So what do we actually need to kind of start using this? Well, let's jump back to the customer repository and just focus on that for the remaining of the video. Because to start working with all of this, there's one very important thing that we need, and that is access to the fake database in the old solution. It's going to be access to the context in the new solution. Let me show you what I mean. If I jump into the old customer repository, every time where I needed to get some information from the database, I needed to kind of add a customer here, right? I grabbed access to the fake database, which was static, easy to use. What we need to do now is we need to instead get access to the context whenever we need to get information from our database. So what we'll do is we'll make a constructor in both of these classes that can actually get access to these um, repositories. So we'll say customer repository, that's the constructor, right? He needs access to a customer app context, right? Let's write context right here. Let's just put in small line right there and say context right here and say context right there and say diddly doo dear. There we go, let's create that field, and make it read only. Ta-ta! So now we have access for the context. The next lesson, we're going to start using this context to start filling out all these blanks right here that says not implemented method.